Uh, Ma'am, you can start. Good evening, participants. Um, so thank you for registering uh, for this webinar. The topic, uh, the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now I call upon our department HOD, Dr. Is Kalarani, to give the welcome address. Ma'am. Hi. Good evening, one and all. Distinguished delegates, participants, and partakers, greeting one and all. It gives me immense warmth and great pleasure to grace all of your presence in this webinar, the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's a glorious moment to extend my warm wishes on behalf of Department of Information Technology, St. Joseph Institute of Technology. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our chairman, Dr. B. Babamunogren, sir, our managing director, Mrs. B. Jessie Priya, ma'am, our director, B. Sashi Shekhar, sir, and our beloved principal, Dr. P. Ravi Chandran, for giving the opportunity to host this webinar. I want to convey my heartfelt welcome to Mr. Brito Aruldas, Director of Treasury IT, Americas for Credit, SUSI, which is one of the largest Swiss banks, USA, for having you here, sir, for sharing your knowledge with our participant regarding the impact of artificial intelligence, machine learning in real time. Now I hand over to Niroshini Infantia, Assistant Professor of our department, staff to introduce our presenter today. Yes, Niroshini, ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I want to convey my heartfelt welcome to Mr. M. Brito Arotas, Director of Treasury IT Americas for Credit Swiss, which is one of the largest Swiss banks in USA for the past four years and founder and president of a startup named Front Row Corp in New Jersey, USA. Prior to his present role, he was the director of Treasury ID in Citigroup's New York, USA. His educational qualifications include a bachelor degree in engineering as a university topper and has won various departmental awards for productivity and innovation. He has got a post postgraduate degree in management and an MS in Computer Science from Stevens Institute of Technology, USA. He has extensive experience in integrating IT and business strategies to design, develop, and deploy large-scale global applications. He is adept at, at system re-engineering and had delivered significant business value with unique combinations of leadership, strategy, and execution skills with subject matter expertise in financial services, technology, and manufacturing industries. He has successfully built and managed the technology delivery of multiple global programs, projects for monitoring and reporting of all key regulatory requirements related to global liquidity risks. He was responsible for the business critical programs of processing platform for trading credit effects and derivatives products. Last but not least, he is a person of multi multiple talents, a marathon runner who has completed a full marathon of 42.2 kilometers last year, and he is a Tamil book reader, club lead as well. Today, we are presenting the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning presented by Mr. M. Dido. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box, in the question box in your YouTube chat box. I'll bring up them at the end of the presentation. Now, without any further ado, we we will turn the time over to Mr. M. Dito. All our dear participants are waiting for your session, sir. Hello, uh, everyone. Um, thank you, Niroshini, uh, as well as Dr. Kalarani for the introduction, for the nice introduction. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome, uh, students from St. Joseph's. Um, it's kind of a great pleasure, and it gives me honor to talk to you um about what i know what i learned uh, and share it right when i let me just start where i uh, kind of uh, uh when i when i started to uh, come over to this us uh, from india years ago uh, during my college days uh, that's a time when robotics was starting okay uh, it was kind of the uh, time when Japan was trying to automate the um, industrialization using industry robots, right? That's the time it all started. In my, during my college days, I used to get professors from uh, Bell Labs. I don't know how many of you know um, uh, what the role played by Bell Labs 
uh, in this whole um, uh, uh, computer science area. It is where the first transistor was invented. Uh, it's where um, uh, the C language was invented. So we used to get professors from the Bell Labs to come and teach us, right? Um, there was one professor who started to teach about um, uh, fuzzy logic, it's kind of a mathematics uh, a logic. He will be so much into it. He used to talk about what to come up. That was about 30 years ago, right? Now I look back, okay, what he was telling and where we are now, right? It's a great journey. It's exponential growth. So I'm not a AI professor or, or, or a, a hands-on person uh, developing, but I manage lots of program as my innovation lead for my company. And I just want to, I don't want to teach you AI. I'm not going to tell you how to code in AI. I'm going to share my experience. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what is happening around the world, particularly in developing countries like US. And Japan and, and other European developed countries, what is the role being played? What do you see as to what is happening related artificial intelligence or machine learning? I'm just going to share my experience and observation. Let me just share my deck first um, once. I hope you are all able to see uh, the slides. Um, so essentially, um, how do we kind of um, look back and, and, and understand what is going on around the world, right? Why do we have to worry about AI and machine learning? First of all, I'm not going to teach you uh, the details, but for people who just want to understand the basics, um, essentially AI is nothing but at a, at a very high level, Okay, it's a theory and development of um, uh, computers and machines uh, to do things which are normally done by human beings. At a high level, that is what AI stands for. Right? So you try to make machines to do what normally human beings are doing all these years. Uh, the machine learning is a branch of AI, um, which um, takes, observes uh, 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 the situation and, and goes through multiple iterations and then through these iterations, it improves uh, the performance and it, it, it improves the outcome, okay? So it's kind of the uh, machine learning is a branch of uh, uh, AI. There are multiple branches under AI. Um, you can all kind of uh, probably know or learning about, okay, the computer vision side, okay? Um, automation, okay, um, the natural language processing. There are multiple branches under this uh, AI. So today let's just, talk about um, what we observe around the industry on this front. Why it is so important, okay? You can easily see right now, all of you know, there is a trade war going on between US and China, right? Underneath that, okay, it's not kind of very obvious, but underneath that, okay, what is uh, the real root cause is countries' supremacy on uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and kind of the technology uh, advancement or technology um, thefts, okay, or forced technology transfer. There are a lot of uh, uh, simmering problems. They are all based upon artificial intelligence and, and machine learning uh, related technology, right? That's one thing you just have to kind of un understand, okay, how important it is in the modern era uh, um, now of, of growth for every country and the, and the job markets for every country. Certainly every business wants to be more, more efficient. They are all kind of adopting AI and, and artificial uh, um, and different branches of artificial intelligence, particularly machine learning to improve their own processing, to be more efficient, to reduce the cost, to kind of go to a wider audience and, and their customers. So, so every company is looking at how do we kind of improve their processing based upon AI and, and machine learning uh, technologies. Right? And the third thing is obviously uh, the community impact. Every major technology improvement over the 400, 500 years of human history has um, needs to have the acceptance by the communities, right? 
the community should understand this is important for them they should understand so there are major impacts on all three fronts uh, for the ai and and, our, and uh, machine learning technologies today i just want to talk about three areas right? uh, three use cases rather right? one is what's happening on the transport front what's happening on the retail front and and maybe on the financial uh, fraud detection side okay let's talk about what's happening on the transport side okay? if you can see one second please every car manufacturer these days they know that vehicular automation is important for their survival it's not just kind of a add on it is their survival right now okay so they don't have the latest technology so they are aligning with all big technology companies you can easily see uh, gm aligning with the technology company google somebody is going after google's technologies right as so apple's automation there are companies trying to kind of uh, work together with the big car companies working uh, with the technology companies to really go ahead and and develop this technology and the speed with which it's progressing is a, a, a superb um, extremely very high Let's understand, okay, what is this uh, uh, technology is all about, right? Who defines, okay, what is a, a self-driving vehicle versus autonomous vehicles, right? There are standards, international standards set by um, SAE agency, and then uh, NHTSA, which is a US uh, federal automated policy, they kind of follow the SAE guidelines and they have defined this automation level into five levels, right? Let's understand what they are, okay? Let me just, uh, the first level is nothing but, okay, drive, the, the mechanical driving, uh, every aspect of driving is taken, uh, done by the human being. So hey, that's a normal level zero. And then the level one picks up something like um, some assistance is available. Okay? Uh, some of the capabilities are uh, blind spot detection, nothing but, I don't know if you guys drive on a, a large highway, um, always when you go through the driving uh, test they will tell you okay always that the mirrors have got a blind spots right it was a huge root cause for many accidents people don't look at it uh the, the cars uh, they come by side or they try to change the lane so the, the blind spot was a main root cause for multiple accidents right so now uh the cars have kind of automated sensors which will warn you it's it's amazing it's not just kind of a static uh, a, a warning system it even calculates how far the vehicle is what speed that vehicle is coming what speed we are going and then suggests okay hey it's going to uh, uh, based upon uh, multiple factors uh, is it okay to turn or is it is not okay to turn so this blind spot monitor has got its own machine learning uh, AI algorithms built in to warn the people. Very similar to it, there were many US accidents, okay, when people um, uh, back up their cars from their driveways, the little kids playing behind, right? They used to kind of go um, uh, um, hit the kids because, okay, they couldn't even see them. There were cameras put in, there were automatic radars put in now, and then there are lane departures, right? People, um, let me tell you, okay, uh, uh, these days, uh, some of the um, uh, cars wouldn't even let you change the lanes if there are there is an object laying around or if there is a car coming around. So right? there are uh, warning systems and there are limiting systems that are helping systems, right? These are all based upon the AI and, 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 um, and the machine learning algorithms built into the car, right? The, and then there are, level two level uh second level um um advancement is nothing but self-driving vehicle okay so they will uh, they will help you and they will drive you um uh, your car um with advanced cruise control and parking assistance right in, in big towns in us and all right parking is a big problem i know even in india parking is a problem but here you have to go by the rules um particularly the parallel parking and all is uh, is very difficult 
So now you can go and park your car nearby and push a button and the car will park it, okay, in, even in tough spots, right? So all this, uh, well, much more than these features, there is an automatic braking feature, meaning if there is any object walking in your path, either in the front or when you are reversing at the back, the cars can apply brakes. Many of the luxury cars these days come with this feature, right? It's a, it's a great tool to avoid accidents or uh, to reduce the impact, okay? They can apply the brakes. They always put a warning, right? Hey, uh, even though it can break, don't trust it. It's kind of a, um, a reason to reduce the liability, but most of the cars can break as long as you are not going at a very, very extremely over speed, right? And uh, there are uh, level three is nothing but they are autonomous. They can conduct some parts of driving for you. At the same time, they would monitor the environment, okay? Let me just give an example. One day I was driving my car early in the morning, okay? And all of a sudden, uh, when I was on the road, uh, my dashboard went flashing red, asking me to pull over, right? Uh, I was trying to see what's going on. The car was driving well, say. Right? And then I tried to pull over. Um, it just so happened uh, due to the cold weather at night below zero, uh, the sensors got ice layers on top of it, right? So it, it kind of sensed the ice as if the ice uh, is on the road or something. So it, it's kind of a, a mechanism to tell you, even though it can uh, run a normal situation, it has to understand the environment. Uh, sometimes, okay, if it is snow on the, you guys don't kind of face this situation, but majority of the developed countries uh, um, beyond the tropics, okay, face a lot of inclement weather, say, right? snow, ice, okay. Um, so naturally, the car technology has to understand the environment. So that's kind of the higher level, okay. The real autonomous vehicles are the level four and level five, right? Um, for example, okay, it has to understand the environment without any need for human uh, intervention, it should be able to uh, drive. Okay. Um, as of now, there are major trucking companies who are really into this one. And um, there are experiments being done right now who um, run the trucks from one warehouse to another without any drivers. There are permits being issued for various companies to try this one. Uh, in another five years, uh, most probably plenty of um, uh, trucks will be uh, driverless right? or autonomous vehicles. The level five is the highest end, completely automated system. It can drive all tasks under all conditions. Uh, that is kind of uh, the um, final version of, uh, okay, um, the automation on this one. Uh, as you guys can see, these levels are improving very fast. Some of the cars you get normally now have the cameras, now have the warning systems, um, but Tesla's autopilot is kind of going to give um, almost like an autonomous uh, uh, driving capability. Um, so there is so much progress done in the few weeks. What is the impact? Okay, here are the trucks for some example, some of the um, 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 sample trucks that are being tested right now. Right? And the drones are playing a bigger role part of the transport, right? If uh, drones can deliver stuff, okay, uh, the need for automobiles can also come down. So this is a faster way to kind of transport things from one place to another, right? This is all happening right now. What is the real impact of this technology, say? You can see, uh, I don't know how many of you knew, right? Uh, those days, like um, um, there used to be uh, somebody called secretary, right? When we joined work, right? For every six or uh, seven people, there used to be a secretary taking shortened notes and then go and type it, right? That role has been totally eliminated by, by computers, right? Now, you have drivers, there are about 3.5 million truck drivers in US right now, US alone, okay? And there are about 2.5 million um, uh, drivers with uh, services like Uber and Lyft. Now, these companies are already starting to run um, self-driving vehicles, right? autonomous vehicles in, in different areas. 
So what will happen to all these jobs? Naturally, they are going to be gone. So in another five years, or, uh, naturally, a major portion of this population might, be, uh, might, be, might, might have to look for some other job. What will happen to the accident rates? Okay. I just give you the picture of uh, um, the, the, some of the accident measurements of, based upon the mileage, uh, average mileage, uh, accidents per average mileage. You can easily see on the blue line for Tesla's autopilot, there is about, uh, about one accident per 700, uh, 7 million miles run. So, the accident rates are reduced because of the AI and, and machine learning technology. And there was an incident in which, okay, Tesla's car was um, uh, in the middle, uh, got into the accident in one of the merge uh, situation. They did the analysis. The final result was uh, the, the human being who was involved in the accident made the mistake. It's not the Tesla, right? It, I'm not telling that it's perfect, but uh, the, the the, the improvements done on uh, the autopilot is amazing, right? Which naturally is bringing down the accident rate. So there are about 6 million accidents. There are about 36,000 deaths on an average in US alone, right? So this AI and machine learning technology is going to greatly reduce the need for emergency services. Uh, and, and the medical need, in fact, because of lowered uh, accidents and, and the death. So it's going to be impact to those services, emergency services, okay, who are running uh, emergency vehicles or the, uh, the emergency wards in the hospital, they are going to be impacted, okay, if we can reduce the number of accidents because of this technology. Okay. Or let's take the case of the a number of vehicles needed, okay. Uh, every um, U.S. Uh, family has got uh, two or three cars. Right? Why do we need two or three cars? Yeah. Because like uh, uh, we have to drive. Because each one has to drive. We all go to different places to work. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the kids drive to senior years or colleges, right? So we need multiple cars per family. So, so if they are all in a small area of I don't know, ten miles to uh, fifteen miles, twenty miles. Actually, you can program the cars, right? One can go in and, and, and get off and then uh, send the vehicle back home, right? Think about that, right? So naturally, the number of cars needed might also go down. What will happen to the car industry? Their revenues and their car sales, their service costs and service revenues, they're all kind of going to be impacted, right? And they might have to go through consolidations. What is needed yet on this one to achieve this great goal? Uh, improved sensor technologies, right? That's very important. Uh, every car these days comes out with uh, um, uh, multiple radars. And in order to have a complete um, um, self-driving capability, okay, autonomous vehicle, they need a lot more sensors. They are a lot more uh, computing power. Uh, and they need a lot more people to train their models, right? So naturally, that is where the scope is that's where the uh, industry is going towards. And then at the same time, we need um, better uh, mapping and navigation algorithms, right? Uh, if the cars have to kind of be autonomous, uh, naturally, okay, the, the mapping and, and, and the roads have to be kind of uh, ready for it. So there are a lot of uh, things have to fall in place which are all happening right now uh, in pockets, okay, where these environments already exist. These are all happening as we speak. The last and uh, not the least, people have to accept. Okay, uh, I don't know if you have you, you should have seen a picture of uh, people driving Tesla um, with their uh, feet on the window. Okay, um, uh, totally hands off from the wheels, uh, drinking, reading, driving. Right, even though they're not uh, supposed to do as a, as per the company's instruction, but people take chances they are testing how good is this autopilot is, right? So, but general public have to accept, right? So how many of you can sit in a car where there is no driver, okay? Uh, how many of you can uh, peacefully relax inside such a car, right? So the, naturally uh, acceptance by the public is very, very important. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's slowly uh, there is a sector of population willing to uh, take this one on. 
So in the next four or five years, we will see great progress on this field. Let's look at um, the second uh, use case, um, retail disruption. As you all know, already um, in India itself, you are feeling how much is this e-commerce is doing. Uh, but let's look at what's happening uh, uh, in, in different areas of the retail disruption. Eh? Um, small businesses are the real key um, uh, component of uh, ma any major modern economies. Right? It's, we used to call them mom and pop stores. Right? In India, you can see that a lot of small storefronts or the vendors who come to your house, right? They're all small business people, right? They try to do these things. Okay? But it's, it's doing, a, uh, it's go undergoing a drastic change uh, because of e-commerce and some of this technology that's being introduced now, right? You can, you yourself can feel what is Flipkart doing to, to some of the local, uh, local uh, shop friends. Um, here, Amazon is kind of eating up every other uh, small, medium businesses in the U.S. and the rest of the world. Right? Uh, so does um, 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 uh, Alibaba. Right? So there are these companies are really uh, leveraging uh, AI and, and, and uh, machine learning technologies to understand customer behavior, first of all. Um, so they understand what the customers want and uh, how to track them how to make them easy for them to purchase. And then they have complete automation in their warehouses. Um, uh, the, the last step of delivering is the next uh, frontier in which Amazon is trying drones. Um, they are uh, recently, they actually two days ago, they made a deal with another auto, autonomous car company called Zook. Uh, they are going to try to have the last mile being delivered using uh, autonomous vehicles. So there, are, there is massive change happening in the retail industry, okay? Here is uh, another Amazon's uh, uh, front, which is called Amazon Go. Um, here, uh, you just walk in, uh, you go pick your stuff, and then you walk out, okay? So this is kind of the, um, when you are entering in, you are going to kind of scan your phone. They know exactly who you are. They monitor through the uh, scanners or radars, right? what you are picking up and what you are walking out, and you, are, you will be charged, right? And uh, people would be pre-preparing food, uh, okay, freshly made food, they just put it into the coolers and then you go pick up, you walk out, right? Absolutely, there is no person. Let me tell you a story, okay? Uh, when uh, I moved to a new building uh, about uh, two years ago, uh, there was a uh, coffee place inside our building, okay? Um, these days, most of the uh, office spaces have um, uh, some knickknacks or coffee to go and grab. I just went and picked it up. There was nobody in the counter, or just waiting and waiting. Uh, nobody showed up. And then somebody came up and say, hey, you don't have to do anything. You just kind of uh, um, just walk out. They know that what you picked up, right? So people, Companies are all uh, trying to use AI and, and, and machine learning technologies to really uh, modernize the whole service industry. What is happening, right? There are about 4.8 million retail sales employees working here. This is going down. Year by year, it's going down. In 2018, uh, it went down by 2% year over year. Uh, E-commerce is one of the main reasons why these jobs are going away. Their uh, sole fronts are being reduced. Uh, but in order for the e-commerce to pick up, they need to understand the uh, human behavior and, and track um, what is being ordered, what is being delivered. Say. Um, normally, people can't wait, order, and then wait for a month to be delivered. Okay, Amazon is delivering food in few hours now. Okay? So you just go and, and just put, put up a cart, uh, what items you want. Uh, within a few hours, okay, it'll be in your house front, door front. So... In the retail front, what has been happening is first they started to introduce self checkouts. Okay, in a large store, you go in, um, there were, okay, you pick up stuff, you scan stuff one by one. Okay, that's a self checkout, right? The second one, uh, the improvement on top of it was unmanned counters, right? Uh, earlier, when you are checking out, people would be standing by the side, okay, to kind of monitor to, to help, but now there are a lot of them are unmanned. Um, then 
there are no checkout counter at all, right? Um, meaning, okay, you, you scan your phone, as I said, like an Amazon Go, you just pick up stuff and walk out, right? Uh, or in, in an office building, the example what I showed you, there is no service person, say right? it's all um, 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 no counter at all. And particularly now, the current COVID situation is really accelerating this whole innovation in the retail industry, say. Right? It's really the e-commerce growth is exponential. Um, they are inventing the pick up and drop off in a, in a very fast manner. Okay? Uh, there are companies which are formed to just pick things and drop off, right? In the last couple of months due to the pandemic. And companies are innovating telling, okay, hey, oh, you, you don't have to, if you don't want to come into the storefront, okay, we'll deliver you at the curbside, right? Or just outside the store, right? Uh, and they are the companies trying to uh, get the order consolidations done. Okay, it's something like Instacart or ShipIt, is right. There are different mechanisms of um, how to leverage a customer's behavior and and get the orders into the hands of the customers. And there, another big impact is the concept of mall is kind of uh, uh, greatly reduced, uh, meaning uh, the mall occupancy is coming. Uh, uh, is becoming very, very low. There are mall companies which are very close to being bankrupt, okay? So there are major impacts happening in the retail industry as, as we speak. How are we doing on the timing? Um, okay. So one last um, uh, use case, which we can talk about is a financial fraud. As you all know, um, there are trillions of dollars being exchanged on a daily basis, right? Um, and always, right, when there is money, there'll be thieves, period, right? Whether it is the old banking system or wherever there is money, somebody will try to steal, right? So it's it's getting worse because now the transactions are all electronic, right? Majority of them are, right? Um, but the companies have to uh, protect themselves against uh, uh, theft, such thefts, right? Uh, leading major companies are trying to um, uh, look at this theft and coming out with AI and, and machine learning algorithms um, to protect uh, uh, their their money from the thieves. Right? Uh, let's take the case of uh, if you go and swipe a credit card, okay, um, it hardly takes a few seconds before it is getting approved. So how does it happen, right? The, the network is run by a few people, okay? Visa, MasterCard, Discoverer, American Express. There are, there are only very few uh, card network company, okay? But they don't take the risk, okay? Any of the theft that's uh, uh, due to um, uh, uh, stealing is really borne by the company or the bank which stands behind that card, right? These are normally banks, okay? Um, uh, City or ICICA or uh, JP Morgan Chase, right? Or, or any of those come or State Bank of India. So the banks which really stand behind that card, it's not Visa or MasterCard, it's the banks which uh, take the risk, right? So the banks have to come out, how quickly can they identify a theft and, and, pr and prevent it? Okay. So, first of all, the theft can take place in, in multiple ways, right? Um, by physically stealing your car or you lose it, it's in the hands of somebody. Then they go and try the pin different ways and they figure it out. Or some people um, watch you inputting your uh, pin or some people had a very bad habit of writing down the pin somewhere else, which is suppose, sup no one should do it, right? or identity theft, right? People um, steal your identity by getting onto your computer laptop or, or stealing it somehow, and, and, and kind of they get to your uh, details and, and your computer, your uh, credit numbers and call the credit card company, somehow convince them to redirect or change their address. They can do lots of stuff by um, stealing your identity, which is, which is very, very dangerous um, in, in the modern uh, informatic uh, information world. Um, the other item is stealing from the vendors, right? So lots of vendors, uh, they were not supposed to store um, uh, sensitive information um, unprotected, but um, the vendors do lose this information of their customers. 
then the thieves get all of those things and, and then use it for their advantage. Uh, one last thing is it's available for sale. Once uh, people steal, uh, uh, they they go out uh, to uh, for for a big sale uh, in the in the black market, and uh, the bad guys uh, probably have a network of buying these things in in the, in the dark web. So uh, easily to understand here is we can lose our information, okay, particularly in the credit information, right? So so if your information is uh, lost, right? Um, the banks, uh, I don't know about the exact rule in India, but here in US, if you can prove that um, your credit uh, card usage was not from you, then the customers are not responsible for paying it back. It's the uh, issuing company who has to um, uh, wound that up. For example, if I am in New York, okay, uh, and if my card is with me, uh, but somebody else uses it from Caribbean, so okay, somewhere Jamaica or somewhere, right? I can easily tell them, hey, I am here, my card is here. This is because of some some uh, card theft. It's like um, then naturally uh, they will open up a case, and the case will be investigated. And 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 normally, okay, if I can prove that I was not the person uh, most of the time, um, then um, I will go scot free. The bank uh, should go after the stealers, or they eat up the losses, right? So the banks, out of the 40 billion transactions per year in US alone, there are about $3 trillion US dollar, okay, per year, right? Think about even if there are 2% thefts, right? The amount the banks are losing is going to be in billions, okay? So the banks are trying to come out with the technology, how to very quickly identify the thefts and, and block it. So it's pretty much like, um, uh, it has to be pretty fast uh, before you swipe and before the approval is sent out, they should be able to get all of the transaction, understand uh, um, who is doing it, where is the transaction taking place and is it kind of a valid or invalid and then make a decision to either approve it or block it. All these things should take place in the few seconds between the swipe and the approval. Yeah. How to do that, right? There are different AI technologies that are used across the board, um, mainly neural network based ones, uh, pattern recognition, uh, some trend analysis of customer analysis, and mainly anomaly detection. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit about these anomaly detections, right? Used by as used by the banks, right? So these are um, machine learning uh, technology. Um, to establish what is the pattern of the customer, right? And if they look at um, different KPIs, okay, measured over the time, they, they store huge data about the customers, their, their behaviors, their patterns, right? Um, such as uh, how often the, user, the person uses their card, which place use it, what type of product they buy, okay? And what kind of transaction amount is uh, uh, normally this customer you, okay, goes for? So all these things are all tracked and, and stored readily available, right? And when the, um, these metrics are um, uh, used to evaluate whether the new transaction is um, in the area of val val either um, valid or invalid, right? Obviously, uh, I have the chart. Uh, there are four possible cases here, right? One is true positive, okay? So, which is you really have a problem and, okay, you, you, you got to know it. You got to be able to uh, understand and stop it. Then the true negative is also, okay, you, you understand it is a real negative case. It's a valid case. The false positive is the one which it tells you, the algorithm tells you it is positive, but it is really false. In this case, the customer will be frustrated. If you take action on based on that and block that transaction, the customer is going to be unhappy, right? So this is what most of the bankers worried about. Okay, hey, how do we stop this false positive, right? Then the worst case is the false negative, right? The, the guy get away with this, right? So it is, uh, uh, it is um, 
really false thing and but the thing is it was not identified that that's the worst case the 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 custom the, the thief goes unscathed uh, and and take the money out and, and run away so so all these cases are to be evaluated and the 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 neural network based mechanisms okay uh, on top of it the real time anomaly detection these techniques are being used by the financial companies to really identify and, and locate any credit card um, uh, misuse and, and, and try to stop them. Uh, this technology is in a, in a real, um, um, uh, how, how do I say, in, in a, it's coming to be an ad advanced stage. Most of the financial companies are uh, well into um, implementing these things. Um, except the very small banks. Small banks are probably still struggling, but the large ones have uh, these systems uh, well established uh, across the world. Um, earlier, when I travel outside, I used to call my company, say I'm going to be traveling. But now uh, most of the big banks have kind of uh, um, have the enough technology that I'm traveling, um, I'm going to be using it. They even kind of made change that I don't have to call it. Right? Um, so um, along with uh, the, the technology of the uh, chips being added to the, uh, to the cards, okay, along with this AI and machine learning uh, algorithms, uh, advanced algorithms, the banks are, um, I think, in a better position nowadays. But it's not going to stop. Uh, as long as there is money, there will be thieves. But uh, the technology is really helping these uh, financial institutions to really reduce the theft. As we speak about all the good things about AI and, and machine learning, we cannot forget about the dangers of AI. Let me just briefly talk about it. Um, first of all, AI can cause damage. Why is that? After all, it is the algorithms are written by human beings. Um, so either intentionally or unin unintentionally, um, uh, we can have um, uh, people um, playing with the code. And, and cause damage, right? That's number one, right? And um, under autonomous decision-making role, AI can take a different views, right? Well, what are we doing in AI? We are trying to kind of mimic what a human a brain is doing. So it naturally it's like as technology and the capability improves, uh, if the machines start to think like human beings, they can even kind of uh, overthink or, or, or use a positive uh, outcome to a negative uh, usage, right? Lots of times, uh, that's what the uh, bad elements uh, do even in the human race, right? They, they take uh, some good thing, but in their mind, they take advantage of it. They, they make it like a negative view. They take a negative view of that good thing, right? Machines can do it. Uh, um, Hollywood has kind of many movies uh, talking about this, um, right from uh, Terminator movie to Avengers, right? They talk about uh, how they, uh, um, uh, this kind of technology can be misused. Uh, in fact, a lot of um, visionary thinkers, um, people like Elon Musk, a lot of them have concerns uh, if, if, if AI crosses a limit, um, what could be potential damage? Uh, there are uh, serious uh, discussions and, and talking uh, about uh, this situation. When, when the intelligence of the machines uh, um, crosses a certain limit, okay, what do we do with that? What can happen? Um, then obviously privacy concern. All these things are possible because of information collected and stored. Okay? Uh, companies can these days uh, track uh, where is every human being at a point, what are they doing? What are they buying? Okay, what movie they are watching? What program is interest to you? Uh, what what do they have? Okay, what do they want? Right. So if all these behaviors are tracked, absolutely privacy is lost. So naturally, um, it could be misused um, uh, by government, by uh, 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 internet service providers, or the companies which buy or people who steal. Right. So cyber criminals can take over uh, your information and, and do whatever uh, they want. So these are real dangers of um, uh, collecting and storing um, every behavior and, and, and the activities of the human beings, right? And, and then apply AI on top of it, it could, it could really uh, lead to different outcomes. Naturally, social media manipulation, 
Um, right from our last U.S. election, there was a complaint about Facebook. Uh, some advertisers on it uh, tried to manipulate uh, voters, right? Uh, naturally, um, uh, in half the messages on WhatsApp is all um, uh, incorrect or, or half-baked information, right? People who believe it probably maybe misguided, is it? So naturally, uh, the social media can try to manipulate human behavior if uh, machines are behind uh, the social media. If the machines start to post messages, right? Uh, what will happen to uh, the societal um, billing? Or what will happen to the society's thinking process, right? So that could be a big influence on this. Uh, and then one last thing is about the warfare, right? When machines can um, uh, um, drop bombs uh, through the drones, uh, right now it's somebody pushing a button. If at some time, if the machines are going to make the decision, okay, what will happen to the warfare, right? Like that's a bigger question, dangerous question. So there are still um, uh, some concerns and 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 um, and, and uh, when the AI crosses the limit, um, uh, uh, we have to watch for, okay, what will happen? There are uh, serious discussion. There are different schools of thoughts on it. Uh, but uh, hopefully, I think uh, the world will um, use it for good purpose and have a control around uh, these excesses. All right. Uh, I just kind of um, um, uh, talked about three areas, but AI is very large. Right? Uh, let's think about it as when I ask a question, I'm not telling what it is, where is it? Now you can see where is AI. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this. What I went through is a very small um, sliver of what AI's usage is as of now. Uh, machine learning is being used in a medical field, okay, to identify cancer cells. There is a study done in which, okay, the, the, the machines are identifying cancers um, uh, at a lot more accuracy levels than even the traditionally, professionally trained doctors, okay? By feeding the proper information, uh, it's happening, right? Uh, in the medical field, uh, the robotics is picking up. Uh, people can do surgeries remotely, right? From Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital, they can do surgery in, in Japan, right? Or Asia, or so. And I'm also looking at um, a little robot uh, in my home, which uses um, amazing uh, cleanup for my house, right? And I'm watching it for the last two years. The machine learning algorithm is constantly improved. Every time I download, it it knows, okay, um, uh, it's it's improving its performance. Right? Earlier, it used to go crazy. It used to leave spaces. Now they are improved. Now it can go reverse, right? Slowly, they are all learning and teaching um, uh, for better improvement of these machines. So uh, AI is like uh, all over the place. You have to just watch out. It's a very big thing. Okay, you were, um, it's, it's, it's needed for the, um, uh, even to decide the supremacy of the countries. And it's changing our lives day in, day out. Okay, you can talk to your phone. Okay, that's a natural language process, right? It's happening all around you. And it's deciding uh, what kind of jobs will exist, what will ex be extinct. Okay, you are in the right field to play a role. You are all engineers, doctors, um, you are all engineers and, and um, uh, researchers. You are in the right field, so you can um, participate. You can learn. You can uh, have your career if you want. There are only three hundred thousand AI engineers. You can, you can, you can be the uh, um, uh, the one among the three hundred thousand and or improve upon the world using AI and machine learning. Having said that, um, I will stop here and then uh, open up for questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, your session was very uh, one one last thing before I close. I want to thank uh, Niroshini uh, Infantia, okay, uh, who just approached me right from the beginning and and uh, kind of um, I, I had to kind of delay her for a few weeks because I was busy with my some of the projects. Um, but for her interest, probably uh, I wouldn't be here uh, in this call. Uh, thanks, Naroshini, for pulling me in and, and kind of um, uh, giving me an opportunity to share it with uh, with the students. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So there are some questions, sir. Uh, so the first question from Sinduja K. Uh, will there be a situation for drone traffic in the coming days or even drone drivers for demand? 
Um, to the, the first question is, will there be drone traffic? Absolutely, yes. In the upcoming days, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. There are already drone permits given to some of the companies to operate drones in uh, specific areas in U.S. Um, so the companies, uh, even Amazon, some of those drone companies are um, uh, uh, taking trials um, in, in, in smaller areas. Okay. Um, so naturally, when the technology improves, um, think about this. If the autonomous cars become a possibility, okay, which is much more um, uh, narrow roads, okay, uh, much more um, um, uh, blockages, people would be walking. But in the air, it's only the uh, vehicles have to be autonomous, right? If the drones and the planes become <laughs> autonomous, most of the planes can uh, fly themselves. Uh, you guys know that probably, say. Right? Most of the big commercial flights, they are autonomous. They can take off, they can uh, fly, they can uh, uh, land <laughs> auto autonomously. If smaller um, airborne vehicles can also do it, uh, if they can navigate autonomously, then probably that will become a reality very soon. There are experimentation taking place. Uh, the drone operators um, are currently needed for large autonomous uh, drones. But for the smaller ones, when they become autonomous, uh, why do we need a driver for a, that vehicle? Okay. Okay. So as long as they are not autonomous, yes. But when they become autonomous, you, we need uh, people who can program that, um, not the drivers. OK. Uh, so there's another question from Vijay. Sir, can you please list a few technology jobs that will be in demand in transport, retail, and finance? Uh, and from Viji, it's, it's a question from Viji, sir. Okay. So naturally, as I was telling, in, in, in the transport industry, uh, what is yet to happen is the uh, design and implementation of uh, sensors. Right? Um, and there is a computer vision um, improvements needed. So the, the, the area of the computer vision is really fast improving, uh, but it still has to reach uh, to the level of speed and accuracy. Uh, think about this, a, a human being can drive, okay, in, in crazy weather, right? Uh, they may take a chance of their lives, but they, there, are, there is a program called ICE uh, Truckers, right? They just simply drive trucks on ice, totally ice in the, near the North Pole and outside. Um, can an autonomous vehicle drive that, right? Uh, it, it can as long as it has the capability of uh, knowing the environment, evaluating the environment, and, and, and then making decisions, okay, appropriate decisions in, in, a, in, a, in a microseconds, right? So um, naturally any job which is going to uh, focus on um, the sensors, uh, technology, the speed and, and the computer vision, um, all those things will be, will be needed, yeah. Okay, thank you, so there's another question. Uh, is artificial intelligence going to create more jobs or take away jobs in the next 10 years? Okay. Um, it will, um, it, it, this is a very big question, okay? Uh, there are um, people thinking that um, it will eliminate lots of jobs, but the type of jobs eliminated will be the ones which I kind of walk through, say, uh, if it, uh, sales representatives at the stores, right? Um, or drivers, right? Uh, these professions oh, probably will be reduced uh, or eliminated, but, um, but on the other side, we need people to program these things. Eh? We need people to kind of modify these things or repair these things. Eh? Um, so there'll be jobs creation on one side and there'll be job elimination on, on the other side. Um, there'll be, there, are, there is one school of thought telling that in another I don't know, five, 10 years, uh, the number of jobs uh, available would be uh, way down uh, there is some concept uh, being uh, talked about even we should have only a four-day weekend, uh, four-day week, working week, meaning if we have to employ more people uh, and the efficiency of the people is very high, why should they work five days or six days a week? Why can't they work less and produce more? This way, more people can be employed. Right? So there are, there are concepts uh, being discussed, but overall, Jobs eliminated will be the low-paying, okay, um, mechanical jobs. 
jobs created will be intellectual job, mind, uh, where in which you have to use your mind more than your hands. Okay. There's another question. Uh, if, art, if artificial intelligence has a threat on privacy, from its a question from Jayashree. Uh, I, I think artificial intelligence directly is not, or maybe it's, a, it's, it's very to a less extent, but the data collected is scooping all your private activities, right? So it's being used by artificial intelligence. By the privacy is a question of who is collecting your information. I'm telling you, there is no privacy these days. Right? Absolutely, uh, you, if you're using your cell phone, uh, naturally, I think uh, there is a big uh, argument going on how much information these phone companies can collect. Right? But it's amazing uh, information uh, collection happening behind your phone, behind your car. It's, it's like privacy is a big part of um, uh, a risk to, to the future. But lots of times people themselves are offering. How many of you really post in WhatsApp or Facebook, okay, what you are doing? So lots of times people are uh, ignorant or are not understanding. Uh, once you put that information out, it's ever available uh, in in the uh, in 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 the electronic world. Okay, so lots of times, particularly the millennials. Okay, we are all kind of uh, in the in the interest of sharing uh, information. We are putting ourselves at risk uh, giving the information. So once it is on the internet, it's going to be used by people. <clears throat> so there's another question. Um, so do you think that Pinaga traffic can be managed by driverless cars using AI? It's a question by Mr. Arun. Can, can you please repeat the question? Uh, T, uh, do you think that Tinaga traffic can be managed by driverless cars? Uh, my view is <laughs> Tinaga should have a complete underground tunnel to go from one end to another to drive the car, right? I don't know why they are building a bridge there, okay? Um, can can um, driverless car work? Um, countries like India, where it's thickly populated and where people easily um, uh, kind of uh, um, cross the borders of what is the traffic rule versus, uh, uh, okay, where they violate the rules, uh, it will be very difficult, um, but it can work in the sense of uh, if they assign a separate lane, okay, where in which these cars can go, uh, and the people have passed this uh, at, the, at, the, at the proper intersections. Right? One of the AI question is, um, uh, does, the, uh, does the AI going to have um, um, empathy? Okay, is it going to have um, like a human being? Obviously that is uh, not right now, right? Uh, there is no feeling for uh, machines yet. Um, maybe uh, when the advanced stage of AI is there, probably uh, we don't know what will happen. So when people cross in front of your car in Tinaker, okay, what is the AI algorithm going to do? We don't know it yet, right? Whether it, it, is, is it going to kind of follow the rules and try to go telling that, hey, this is the road, I have a green signal, I'm going to go? Or is it going to say, hey, if I go, even though I am not at fault, if I go, I'm going to hit that person, so I'm going to stop? So there are lots of questions to be answered before an autonomous vehicle be run in, in Tinagar traffic. Okay, so there's another question, sir. Uh, what is the curriculum about AI and machine learning, like latest technology for India versus USA, if any advancement is required? Okay, yeah, yes, as I said, there are multiple branches, right? So uh, the computer vision, um, um, okay, is, is only one of that, right? You can pick up... Uh, um, network um, uh, algorithms, right? We can do things on which are done by the cancer cell research, right? You don't need, uh, there is no difference between such research, whether it's in US or in India, right? There are different branches of AI you should pick up, uh, which can 
uh, in India also have equal footing uh, to continue and, and, and complete it successfully. So maybe the autonomous vehicle may be a tough one um, in, the, in the main traffic area, but there are a lot of other AI uh, um, uh, branches uh, in which India uh, needs to be, should be um, uh, doing a lot more work. If we want to compete with uh, countries like India and China, um, there are different branches uh, which needed to be picked up by India immediately. We cannot have much time delay because China is making very fast progress on the AI and machine learning side. Uh, India should also follow, pick up a branch, pick up multiple branches, and we need to be, uh, we need to be able to kind of uh, um, uh, make progress on that. Apart from China, uh, I think even Israel is doing a big job on the artificial intelligence, right? So that's a small country, right? Uh, that has got uh, similar problems like us, right? But they are making uh, a tremendous progress on this front. Okay, so, uh, so the last question. Um, so is the banks embracing AI and autonomous technology completely? Um, I don't know what's meaning by completely. Uh, the bank's uh, view is wherever it makes sense to them, they are they are adopting it. Um, it's not only the fraud detection. I'll tell you another area. Um, uh, uh, there is a major effort, AI machine learning um, uh, technology being used um, in the advice business. What is an advice business, right? Um, I know that some of you who trade stock or bonds, right? So you have your uh, customer service rep calling you all the times, right? Uh, hey, this stock is doing well, you invest it. Or put your money, I'm going to show you investments, right? Now, in US, majority of the banks, um, they used to call them uh, brokers, meaning they are the money managers. Um, if, if you have uh, some amount, you just kind of let them manage it. Okay, they will buy investments for you. Okay, they will buy what to what to invest on and all. So naturally, um, um, nowadays because of AI and, and machine learning, um, the whole uh, advisory business is at risk. The banks are um, having algorithms in which, as a as an investor, I can just go and ask a natural language question uh, to, to a program telling, hey, I have $100,000, okay, where would I invest, right? So then based on my profile already, which is stored, and, and based on my current financial condition, it can tell you on my age, or lots of factors will be put in, and it can tell you, hey, you can do this one. You can you can buy this stock, or you can buy this bond, or hey, don't, don't buy this, market is bad condition, just put it in your so the whole advisory business is now being transformed, okay, using AI and machine learning. So, so the the number of brokers' jobs are coming down, right? So banks are um, uh, really trying AI and machine learning more than AI. Machine learning um, is widely be, being tracked for various uh, financial um, um, uh, jobs inside the banks. Okay, that's all. That's all for the day. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Niroshini, for the wonderful opportunity. I'm glad that uh, I was able to share my um, information. Uh, one last thing I'll tell you is, guys, there are, there is plenty of freeware, shareware information available uh, on the net with the big technology companies. Okay, I would highly encourage you guys to go ahead and 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 try to look at this. Eh? Google. They, they make them available freely for, for the people to test, right? So you can go ahead and, and, and try something on the Google AI Hub is there, right? And there is an Apple uh, Core ML, uh, okay? So Core ML, which has got, right? IBM has got the Watson programs, okay? So you can, you can have lots of um, um, freely available software and algorithms uh, uh, for you to go and try your hands. So you should kind of go ahead and, and try pick up a uh, pick up a, um, a topic, and you will be able to create uh, uh, machine learning or AI algorithms programs in a couple of days. Right? Many times these are black boxes. You have to just make few calls of small programs. You'll be able to use it. I would highly encourage you guys to go and try it out. There are plenty of free stuff available for you to try. Okay. Having said that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Niroshni. Appreciate it.
for the chance. Mr. Pat, sir, uh, I call upon uh, Dr. R. Priscilla to deliver the word of thanks. Good evening, all. The essence of all beautiful art is gratitude. On behalf of St. Joseph's Institute of Technology and the organizing team of our Department of IT, I especially thank our resource person, Mr. M. Brito Araldas, Director of Treasury IT USA, for gracing this webinar by sharing your knowledge on impact of AI and ML and the levels of automation of vehicles, impact of autonomous vehicle technology, etc. Sir, I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for making excellent, excellent real-time presentations and making this uh, webinar a meaningful very and very interesting one, sir. Thank you. I thank our patrons, our chairman, sir, Dr. B. Babu Manogran, sir, and our managing director, Mrs. B. Jessipriya, ma'am, our director, Mr. B. Sashishega, sir, and our beloved principal, sir, Dr. B. Ravichandran, sir, for all their inspiring words of wisdom that radiated a source of energy with us. Last but not the least, I thank all the dear faculty, students, researchers, for all the participants for showing your interest in this program. Once again, I thank you very much to all the participants. Thanking you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.